Hi guys, how's it going? It's Liam here with a very short presentation about insulin, glucagon and fat loss. In this presentation I'm just going to introduce the concept of insulin and glucagon and explain it in brief simple terms as I possibly can how they directly relate to whether or not you actually gain fat or store fat or whether you actually lose fat, okay? Now, insulin isn't just something that diabetics should be concerned about, okay? If, if, if diabetics were more concerned about insulin, particularly type 2 diabetics, then they wouldn't end, end up being diabetic in the first place, okay? Now, in terms of a fat loss point of view, if you don't really understand what insulin does within your body, then you're going to miss out on a key element of successful fat loss. So I'm going to introduce you to these two today, and I'm going to explain a little bit about each and how they directly impact and affect your fat loss results. Okay, so we're going to start with insulin and the role of insulin within your body. Now, it's safe to say that insulin is an essential hormone and one that we simply can't live without, or one that we, we couldn't live if we didn't have it. Um, the reason for that is because it's responsible for the storage and transportation of nutrients and energy to where it's needed. So whether that's our organs, whether that's tissues, muscles, um, or liver, then that's insulin's role. It's kind of like a, a transportation bus is the easiest analogy that I can give you. Insulin's primary role is actually to lower blood sugar. So when we eat something highly sugary, your insulin levels will, will dramatically increase, as will your blood sugar levels, because it's trying to collect the sugar from the blood and transport and store it wherever it needs. Okay, So that's pretty much what insulin does. Obviously, the, the problem that we have with insulin is that if we didn't have it, we would have nothing to do with that. Now, I said at the top that we can't live without insulin. The reason we can't is because type 1 diabetics, for example, who have damaged beta cells in the pancreas and can't actually secrete insulin efficiently. Um, before the, the, the sort of invention of injection, insulin injections, they never used to live very long, okay, because they didn't have anything to transport the food or the energy um, that they were putting in the body. So, obviously, there'll be a lot of breakdowns within sort of organs, metabolisms, etc., etc., so insulin, like I say, when it's high, the problem that we have is that we enter storage mode. Obviously, an element of storage and transportation is essential, okay? If we can actually use what we're storing and transporting, that's absolutely fine. However, due to our modern sort of processed, refined, sugary diets, we actually eat and consume more sugar than we actually need, which basically means that insulin always goes higher than we need, which also means that every time it is high, chronically elevated, we enter storage mode. So if you're constantly living on um, sugary kind of refined processed diets, then throughout one day, you're probably going to have a constant uh, spike in insulin or a chronically elevated level of insulin, pretty much making sure that you're storing fat all day. So another process that's broken down when insulin is high is the release of fatty acids. Okay, um, This is a process that simply can't take place when insulin levels are high. So that's insulin. We're going to move on to glucagon now, which is exactly the opposite uh, in effect to insulin. Again, another essential hormone, one that is uh, primarily there to put us in, in a burning mode, if you like. So when glucagon levels are higher, insulin levels are lower, which basically allows your body to go into a fat burning or a burning mode. Okay. Um, glucagon's primary role is to rebalance or, re, or kind of re-raise the blood sugar levels, if you like, if insulins were to bring them down. So if they drop too low, if blood sugar levels drop too low, it'll be glucagon's job to then bring it back up to normal. Okay. Normally, we can obviously bring it back up to normal ourselves by eating something. So diabetics, when they're about to have a hypo, they would generally go and, um, they would generally go and eat something to bring the blood sugar levels up quickly. However, throughout a steady normal day, then glucagon will be there just to rebalance and raise the blood sugar levels back up to normal. When glucagon um, is high, it's generally stated that it's high when we fast. Okay, we actually incorporate fasting into week two, uh, sorry, month two of Geffert Academy, due to the um, the research to support that when fasting is actually taking place, glucagon levels are a lot higher, which makes sense if you think because. Insulin is only secreted when we, when we eat pretty much, okay? So if we're fasting and we're not eating, then the, there shouldn't be the need for the ex excess and the higher levels of insulin, okay? So the, the glucagon will then be higher, okay? And meaning we can actually do a lot more fat burning. So fasting, you know, there's plenty of arguments for and against, but in terms of glucagon levels, generally it's higher when we fast. To look at now the blood glucose levels or the blood sugar levels, 
if you want to get successful fat loss, then this is the kind of graph or kind of sort of line and wave that you're going to be looking to, to, to imitate, if you like, with your blood sugar levels. And this is what we would call a healthy, non-fat storing line of blood glucose. The reason it's good is because if we look at this black line here, this black line is what we call the upper threshold, okay, so the upper limit of your blood sugar level. This is your blood sugar, okay, or your level of blood sugar, uh, just nicely going along, uh, up and down nice and gentle, with not very high peaks, not very low troughs. Now, if we maintain this and we never really hit this upper threshold, then we wouldn't actually need the extra insulin production, okay. If we don't need the extra insulin production, it basically means that we don't need to store any extra fat, okay? And we just use pretty much what we put into our bodies, whether that's through exercise or whatever. Um, unfortunately, due to our modern day diets, again, due to sugar, processed foods, refining, um, and, and all the others, we, we, we actually mimic something more like this, okay? So this is why you need to understand why insulin and why glucagon actually work um, either for or against you for fat loss. Now, if we, again, look at this line, this line here is the upper threshold once again. However, this time we've added the lower threshold. Every time your body or your blood sugar level goes higher than the upper threshold, so in this kind of mountaintop, if you like, this is what we call a fat storing mode. Because this normally happens extremely fast if you're eating sugary things, then the, it's actually going to go down just as quick. So it's going to actually go down as quick as it's went up. Unfortunately, when it goes down, it drops below the lower threshold of blood sugar, and this period here at the bottom of the mountain, if you like, is actually going to be cravings time. So if you think if you eat eat something like wheat on the morning, which your body treats like a sugar anyway, um, by about ten o'clock you're going to have this kind of thing going on, and then you're going to enter this cravings where your blood sugars drop below. And you're going to want to eat something else, and it's generally not going to be carrot and hummus that you go for. Uh, it's probably going to be something like a Mars bar or something like that, which is going to again put this roller coaster out. So if you've got blood sugars like that, that are constantly going up and down, up and down, we've got extra insulin secretion, then you're going to end up storing a lot of body fat. So the ways in which to control insulin and glucagon is really by simply what you eat, okay? Knowing what to eat and when to consume it. Alcohol itself is the simplest form of chemical sugar that you can pretty much possibly pollute your body with, okay? Don't need to give you a lecture on, on how bad alcohol is, obviously. Um, but when you're trying to cleanse, when you're trying to drop a lot of body fat, alcohol should be out your diet for at least kind of 28 days at least, okay, to help balance out your blood sugars. Every time you drink alcohol, your blood sugars go through the roof, and so does insulin, and, and hence your cravings will start later. Um, it's no coincidence that you, you want to take away our kebab at the end of the night. The next thing is sugar. Again, sugar actually makes you fat, okay? It's not actually fat that makes you fat. And the more sugar you eat, the higher your insulin levels will go. The higher they go, the more fat storage you do and the fatter you become, okay? So taking sugar out of your diet is pretty much the best thing you can do, okay? You, sh you shouldn't need sugar in your diet at all. We only pretty use glucose anyway, okay? Uh, we don't have any kind of requirement for things like even fructose from fruit sugar. Uh, but also kind of maltodextrin and dextrose and other chemical sugars as well. Um, so sugar's out. Now potatoes. This is a bit of a um, somewhat controversial one because potatoes, despite being clean and non-toxic, are actually extremely starchy. Okay, And anything starchy causes that dramatic high effect on your insulin levels. Now, for the first 20 days or the first three or four weeks of your program, Personally, I would recommend re removing potatoes altogether, okay, because they're so starchy and they cause such a spike in blood sugars and also insulin levels. After your first month, if you have to get them in there or if you have to put them in, you can't really live without them. Breakfast and post-workout is the only time that you should be eating potatoes, okay, because that's when we have depleted stores of glycogen, so just depleted stores of, of blood sugar, and your body can accommodate for the spike. So potatoes out, for, at least for the beginning. Okay, now, so refined grains and wheat. Your body actually treats wheat as a sugar, okay? It can't distinguish between sugar and wheat. So when you eat wheat, your body thinks you're eating sugar. Your blood glucose levels go dramatically high. Insulin goes massively high and you start storing fat. And again, you start on your roller coaster. If you eat cereal for breakfast, if you eat toast or things like that, then you're probably the type of person who actually reaches for a snack about mid-morning. Mid so again, when we're cleansing... When we're trying to stabilize blood sugars and when you're trying to get fat loss, you need to remove these 
uh, wheat based products for my diet and we've got processed food pretty self explanatory the problem with processed food is that they, they simply um, simplify the chemical structure of these original foods turning them into something that I like to call non foods in the sense that they hold no nutritious value whatsoever okay they don't give you any any benefit to your health and they cause a havoc with your blood sugars eating ca this kind of stuff um, not only is toxic to your liver and your body um, it also puts you in massive fat storage mode kind of like the sugar would so again remove these from your diet as soon as possible if you want successful fat loss okay so the bottom line with with this is simply if insulin is high and glucagon levels is low you will store fat no matter what. Um, eating sugar, alcohol, starchy carbs and all of the other things that we discussed before will cause cat cat catastrophic effects to your blood glucose levels and your insulin levels and it will put you on that roller coaster that we st saw before with all of them fat storage peaks but not only that we will also continue to have these cravings for more sugary based products so sugar, alcohol, starchy carbs and things like that pretty much just get them out of your diet as soon as you can um, Unstable blood sugars or blue sugars, as I've wrote there, uh, will no doubt lead to cravings and more fat storage. So it's kind of a vicious circle, okay? You eat something sugary or you eat something starchy or you drink alcohol, for example, then you're going to spike insulin, okay? If it's happened so quick, then you're going to crave. Then you're going to crave something sugary, you're going to eat it, then you're going to spike. Then you fat store, then you crave. Then you spike and it constantly goes up and down and up and down. So, in a nutshell, when insulin's high, you will store fat. Learn to control your blood sugars by eating the right thing at the right time, and you'll get successful fat loss. Thanks for watching. Take care.